Preparing for the final trump. It is vital to be prepared to be conformed to the image of Christ. This is not just a casual thing. When we are glorified, it will be in the twinkling of an eye. The twinkling of an eye. We won't have time to think about anything. We won't have time to correct anything. We will either be ready or not. We don't know the precise time. So we must be ready at all times because the time can be at any minute. Don't just think that it's some time in the far distant future. You have to know when it is. In Romans 8, starting in verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present age, present time, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which we shall receive and which shall be revealed in us. There's no comparison, so we can't equate the two. For the earnest expectation, the earnest expectation of this present eagerly waits We eagerly wait, that's what you have to do, for the coming of the Lord, for the returning of the Son of God. And the creation, it says, it continues on down. Read the rest of the chapter because it continues on down to tell us that the entirety of creation groans and waits for this event. And we are part of that creation. It must be at the forefront of our thinking at all times. Anything the devil throws at us. And the pressure these days, I know, is great. I experience it myself every day in many, many ways, just like all the rest of you. But we have to keep this firmly in mind that whatever persecution comes upon us. It is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. And that's what we have to focus on. That's what keeps us going. That's what we have to know. We we couldn't deal with what's going on if we didn't know that and keep that in our thinking. So, remember that in Jude 14, and 15, there's only one chapter in Jude, so it's 1, 14, and 15. The word says that the total body of Christ will only number in the tens of thousands when we ride back from New Jerusalem for the battle of Armageddon, which is the final battle of the tribulation, the final trumpet judgment when we will face the 200 million man army, think about that, farther than the eye could see, the 200 million man army of Antichrist in the Valley of Megiddo, and we will speak the word with Christ, and they will melt like wax. But that number, total time, past and present, of the true members of the body of Christ will only number in the tens of thousands. This is something that we have to realize when we get to wondering why the majority of Christians, as they call themselves, embrace and hold on to false doctrine and take the whole thing lightly. Yes, there are only a few of us not because God selected us separately, because as the word says, when Jesus came, 
It was no longer the Jews who were his special chosen people. That ended. When Jesus came, he made himself and the kingdom available to whosoever will. Anyone who chooses. So it's our choice. The kingdom is available to all who choose the truth and make themselves as born again in the Spirit by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Members of the body of Christ make themselves obedient to the word and therefore qualified and be among the tens of thousands. It's very small. So pay no attention to all of the false prophets of whom Jesus warned us strenuously against from the beginning of his ministry. He talked to us about being aware of false prophets, of wolves in sheep's clothing, of the tares that were sown by the enemy into the church. So we have to take this to heart. There will be billions, yes, with a B, billions of Christians who have disparaged the real truth and will be here for the tribulation. They will miss the rapture. There are those out there saying that billions of Christians will be taken off the earth in the rapture. I've heard people talking about it recently. Well, they ought to read their Bibles. They really should. Because nowhere does it say that there are billions of members of the body of Christ. Of course, these people probably don't even recognize that the church is the body of Christ. They probably think we're the bride, which is an idolatry and a disqualification. And so we can't listen to just people. We have to listen to the word. And they should read the word instead of just listening to people saying things they want to hear. And it's very important. And it's very important to know exactly what is going to be. So, again, I mentioned Jude first, and only what chapter? 14 and 15, which says, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these, meaning these who ride back from New Jerusalem. They prophesied about these, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, all the world, judgment, and to convict all who are ungodly among them of all of their ungodly deeds which have that which they have committed in an ungodly way and of all all the harsh words which they have spoken against him against god so we will be riding with christ as his body when we come down to execute god's judgment upon all of the earth and we will only number in the tens of thousands so we have to be ready we have to be aware of what it takes to qualify i teach on this a lot because it's so important and it's sad that the majority of christians have really no interest in it. They think just because they call themselves Christians and tell God, you know, whatever happens there with him, that that's all it takes. No, that is not all it takes. So, understanding that this tens of thousands is a tiny percentage of the 14 or so billion who have lived and are living on this earth, it's just very, very small. That's why Jesus said narrow is the way and difficult the path that leads to life and only a few will find it. 
And then he goes on to say the majority will go by the broad way, which means anything goes, and they will be led to destruction. So this narrow path is what we have to be on. And we have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and be able to lay hold of this glorious future as permanent members of the body of Christ and be qualified to receive this awesome reward walking right down the middle of the word. That's the narrow path, is the word. So, don't listen to what people say unless it lines up with the word of God. Everything you hear taught about the word, about God, about the kingdom, about anything to do with it, must be measured by the word. You must look it up in the word and make sure that what you're hearing lines up with the word. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't line up with the word, then flee from it and renounce it and cut it off. Because if you don't, then you will be disqualified. As it says in the first chapter of Galatians 6 through 10, that if you are listening to even, let alone speaking, anything other than the pure truth of the word, then you are under a curse and you are disqualified, therefore, from the kingdom. Isaiah 46, 10 says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient things, ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure, says the Lord. Well, that's exactly what he will do and his pleasure is the word. So we have to care what God says, not what people in general say. And everything we listen to has to line up with the word. The way to be ready is to make the word your reality in every respect. In every respect. Hold fast to the doctrine of Christ, which will put you in the place to receive everything that the Lord paid such a great price for. It's not difficult to be qualified. You just have to be obedient. It's, it's, not, it's not a problem. It's, it's not difficult to figure it out. God wrote it down for us. I mean, this is the way it is. In 1 Peter 2, starting in verse 1, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. As newborn babes, remember we're born again, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And then continue on down through that chapter on your own because it is, it, it tells you what this is really all about and you have to meditate on it and know it for yourself. You have to look up towards your true home in heaven. Remember, we're not citizens of this world. We're citizens of heaven in which you are going to reside for the rest of eternity, in glory and in peace. You are an alien in this world. Accept it. Don't fight against it. Don't try to fit in. You don't fit in. You're not supposed to fit in. You're supposed to fit in the kingdom. 
Keep your eyes on your future and be sure to qualify. As I said, God doesn't make it difficult. You just have to pay attention. And then you will have this awesome future free from all oppression. If you have any questions, then please, you can call me at the number on my website, which is bdhyman.com, or you can email me at answers at bdhyman.com, and I will be happy to help you. Remember, the better you know the word, the better you know God. Amen.